Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm looking at an ink. Uh, this review was requested by uh, one of my viewers who is looking for an ink for work uh, that has a bit of water resistance, uh, is professional enough uh, and looks good in a fine point nib. That ink uh, is Noodler's Navy and uh, this is the ink. Uh, it's a, an interesting sort of um, blue uh, and we'll have a look at it in closer detail on the paper. Uh, and sort of see how it performs and what it's like. So I have it in the Twisby Eco with a fine nib. Uh, so let's check it out. So here we have Noodler's Navy on the Rodeo dot pad. Um, as you can see in the broad nib particularly, it really uh, stands out as a beautiful deep dark sort of blue with some nice sort of lighter blue, almost teal shading. Um, in the finer nib you get less of the shading, uh, but you do get uh, some really nice depth to the colour. So as you can see the two pens I had this in were a Noodler's Ahab with a broad, which is a Goulet broad, and a Twisby Eco with the fine nib. Um, the fine being, as I uh, have taken it to be sort of a good sort of workhorse sort of uh, nib for work, and uh, depending on the paper you are having to use, it will sort of stand up fairly well on most paper. Let's look at some of these uh, uh, these stats here. So feathering, well, there's on the rhodia, uh, there is none. Bleed, there is none. Uh, cleaning, it's a meat. It's I, I'd say it's a sort of a, it's a fairly fairly standard water resistant ink and a blue ink to clean. It takes a little bit uh, in some. Uh, pens, pens that don't flush entirely, uh, it'll hang around in, uh, but otherwise it's pretty good. It's got excellent saturation, and it's quite a wet ink. Uh, as you can see, sort of from the dry time here on Rodeo, it was still wet after 30 seconds. So we're talking, once again, not atypical for Noodler's ink, uh, and quite sort of, uh, yeah, uh, sort of standard in the, in the, um, the, this sort of inks of this sort of saturation. So a couple of non-water resistant color comparisons here. Just for the sake of it, I put uh, Waterman's um, Serenity Blue here. Now this is a uh, a pretty sort of standard blue, and you can see it's I've got a sort of a bit more purple uh, in the blue than the sort of almost tearly shading of the navy. Um, Robert Oster School Blue I thought was sort of a semi close sort of comparison. Here is uh, the navy, and here is uh, School Blue, uh, and here we've got Lake of Fire as well, which I actually think is a really close match. I'll show you in just a second. Um, and Diamine Oxford Blue, once again, just for sort of another dark blue. Um, once again, much darker and much sort of less of that sort of shading. Just in terms of those colour comparisons, let's have a quick look at these. So here I have the, the Noodler's Navy. Now, as you can see, there really is a lot of sort of that tearly sort of shading coming through, but then that dark, rich blue is actually really, really beautiful. Here is School Blue, which as you can see is a lot more vibrant blue. But what I thought was an interesting comparison was Lake of Fire. It's not got quite the same um, lightness in the teal, if you will, but does still have those sort of same shading overtones and a similar sort of level of sort of a, a red sheen. School Blue tends to sheen a little bit more. So I've got it here on some copy paper. Now, this was never intended to perform super well, but it's done a pretty a solid job, really. Um, you can see it's, I've laid down a little bit of ink here, and when you turn over, you'll see that it's actually performed really nicely. Broad nib, you do get some feathering. You can really see it there on the on the B of brown. Uh, but you get l much less feathering. There's a tiny little bit uh, from the fine, but not really enough. And this is sort of regular copy paper. It's flimsy, flimsy. it's, you know, it's not designed to handle fountain pens. And just a little bit of writing there with the fine, um, some bleed, a hint of feather, uh, although nowhere near as much as the broad. Um, and I really do like the colour of this ink. And this brings me to my next uh, section here, comparisons in terms of the water resistance of this ink, because Noodler's Navy is sold as a water resistant ink. Now for this I've done another test, which I will show you here on some more Rhodia paper. I've taken Noodler's Navy, Detrimentous Document Turquoise, Document Blue, and Document Dark Blue, as well as Blackstone Barrier Reef Blue, and I've put them under two tests. One is 
a water test where I let the water sit on the page for a couple of minutes, uh, and then one is with bleach. Now, as you can see, the detrimentous inks tended to fare a tiny little bit better. Uh, there's less ink sort of moving around than you get from the noodlers, but the noodlers also performs better on the paper. I think these detrimentous uh, document inks tend to adhere uh, to the paper and soak into the paper, whereas noodlers navy tends to, I won't say sit on top of the paper and dry in a sort of semi-permanent sort of state, but it is much closer. Uh, it doesn't sort of seep in quite to the same degree, as you can see from here. The only time it seeped in was where the water and the bleach sort of came through the page. Uh, whereas even in the, so you see the, the writing there, there's nothing that sort of comes through. Uh, whereas with the detrimentous inks, uh, they do tend to seep in just a little bit more. The Blackstone is the same. It sort of doesn't seep into the paper, but dries quite permanent, but it is a much more vibrant blue than Noodler's Navy. Still, I think, okay for professional use, uh, but yeah, much brighter. So on this other copy paper, I just wanted to do a quick uh, water test there as well, simply because I think uh, this is the sort of uh, paper it's going to be used on uh, a lot in sort of office situations. So here I have the Noodler's Navy, Detriment's Turquoise, Document Blue, uh, Document Dark Blue, Blackstone Barrier, uh, Barist, Barrister Blue, I think I said Barrier Reef before, um, Barrister Blue, uh, and Robert Oster School Blue. So here I've just done some squiggles with each of these inks, and I happen to have a handy syringe full of water just here. So I'm just going to lay down a little bit on all of this. Here. Remembering this is copy paper, not designed as archival paper, not designed to be water resistant paper in its own right. So if you are writing at work and you spill a cup of water or a coffee or something on your paper, this is the sort of result you're going to get. So I'll let it sit there just for a second while um, I discuss a couple of other things about the ink. Firstly, it comes in the usual noodlers bottles and samples, depending on where you get it from. The usual bottle is the uh, 90 ml or, uh, bottle from noodlers, and it is always generously uh, full. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, bottle to use. It's deep, it's got a nice open neck, uh, and it sort of does the job absolutely beautifully. And you do get a really good amount of ink for the price. At $12.50 American, it's an absolute steal. Also, while we're here, let's look at the chromatography. So this will give you a hint as to some of the water resistance of this ink. A lot moves up, particularly the lighter colours, and it leaves sort of a darker line there, uh, sort of a so close to grey sort of line, but a lot of that depth of colour really does get soaked up. Okay, let's now dry this paper and see what we've got. Well, as you can see already on the paper towel, there's a considerable amount of ink from somewhere. Uh, coming up. So let's look at this in some detail. What do we have? So, Noodler's Navy, the ink does move around, but you have managed to keep quite a lot there, and the definition, I think, is actually still fairly clear. Document turquoise, yeah, that's not really going anywhere. Neither is blue or the dark blue. Dark blue does perform really quite well indeed. So then, uh, Barrister Blue from Blackstone, I think is probably one of the most water-resistant uh, inks in, out of this lot. Um, really nothing moves uh, and it's also quite well behaved. So then the school blue, which is a non-water resistant ink, I'll just put it there for comparison's sake, you can just see how much of that ink moves around. Now in comparison to navy, it's not that different really, but what navy does is it has a nice dark grey uh, blue line that sort of remains and allows you to see the definition of what was there, whereas with school blue, as you can see there, a lot of that definition just disappears. So I just wanted to show you how this ink performed uh, in terms of uh, bleed and feather and things like that. As you can see here on the Rhodia, there's a bit of ghosting, uh, but that's not sort of unheard of anyway. Uh, but really nothing has come through the paper. It's performed really, really well and uh, there's no uh, feathering either. You do get some bleed, of course, on the as I showed you on the water resistance page, uh, the testing page, because where we've added other liquids, it's sort of come uh, through there. But really, for the most part, it performs pretty well. If you look at the back of the copy paper now, we do get a little bit of coming through. Now, this was in a fine nib there and in a broad nib at the top here. So it has come through uh, quite 
heavily, uh, even with the fine, uh, but this is sort of quite low quality uh, copier paper. So it may not be the best ink if that is sort of the desired effect that you're going for, for use on this sort of paper. Um, in a way, it doesn't perform any better or worse than the detrimentous inks there, and uh, their water resistance is sort of considerably uh, higher. One other paper I quickly wanted to show you uh, this ink on was a uh, paper from the Baron Fig notebooks. Now these are my, I suppose, my notebooks of choice. Uh, and I like the texture of this paper. It's got a nice sort of toothy sort of quality that lets me know I'm writing on it. I do quite like the feedback. Um, it's a sort of slightly coarser grained paper, uh, but performs really well with sort of uh, fountain pens. So you can see here I've done you know, just a little bit of sort of writing. There's no bleed or noticeable feathering. Uh, this is with the uh, the Eco Fine nib, as I sort of said earlier. And you can see I put down quite a lot of ink here. So if we look over the page, there's the ghosting, but nothing has come through. So this ink does perform pretty well, uh, and it's quite quite good to see actually. So I would have to say the water resistance of this ink is fair. It's not absolutely waterproof, but it does a pretty decent job. Overall, I think this is a really nice ink. I think it performs really well. And at the price, it's a really good option for those looking for something that is not black, but still relatively water resistant from uh, for a work use. So that was Noodler's Navy. This is an interesting ink. It's got a really nice color. I'm not sure if I would call it navy. It's perhaps a little bit too light uh, in the, the blue for my taste in that respect. It's got a little bit too much sort of teal that comes through, but it performs well. It's nice to write with. It performs well, fairly well on all uh, paper, and it looks great on the page. It's close enough to those sort of Robert Oster blues for my taste, uh, and I think uh, it has something interesting to say on the page. So not the most water resistant permanent uh, ink or most water resistant ink, in fact, uh, but it, d it does a pretty decent job. And if you got it wet, well, you'd still have your writing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. If you've got any inks you'd like me to look at, please uh, don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, and Please feel free to drop me a message on any of the platforms listed below or comment on any of the videos on my channel. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy your ink, and I'll talk to you later.